Here we go. Off into the controversial zone. Dee 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 dee. Dee 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 doo. <laughs> Hello, my friends. This is going to be uh, a little bit different of a video, but I'm excited for it. Uh, it is the everlasting discussion of whether swatches are relevant or not. Are arm swatches in any way representative of how an eyeshadow or a blush or whatever powder product you're using, it, the way that it performs on the face? And my argument is going to be yes. Yes, it absolutely does give you clues as to how the product will perform. But we're gonna get into that in a minute. If that sounds interesting to you, if you wanna hear my argument, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. Very recently, the YouTuber James Charles came out with his teaser trailer for his palette with Morphe. Not very, very soon after that, not very long after that. Uh, people were, were a little upset with James and I will show you why. Basically what he had done, and it looks like he had done on his arm, was that he had swatched it once and then swatched the shade again over top. A lot of people accuse James of being deceptive in this. James has tried to explain why he did that, but this video really isn't about James. It's about the reaction to James and other people who do swatches when people say, swatches don't even matter anyway. Why do people even look at swatches when it comes to product performance? And I'm going to explain why, because myself personally, along with many other YouTubers and Instagrammers, do do swatches in order to, do, uh, to show product performance. Are swatches the best way to see whether an eyeshadow performs? Absolutely not. The best way to see an eyeshadow and the way that it performs is to put it on an eye in a typical fashion, typically with brushes to show how it performs and then do a wear test, things like that. That is the best way to see how an eyeshadow performs. Another great way is to do what my friend Shay does over at That Girl Shay XO, where she does eye swatches on her actual eyes and puts them on her eyes with brushes, which is fantastic. But when you've got a product like James's palette with so many colors, you're gonna be rubbing your eyelids raw doing eye swatches with something like that. Not that it's not possible and not that Shay and others may, <laughs> may go into that, but it's, not, it's just not always practical. Also, if you are in a store and you wanna decide whether you wanna buy an eyeshadow palette or not, swatching can help. So again, is it the best way to tell performance? No, but you can get hints to performance with that. And that is the purpose of this video, is to show you how to look at swatches on your own arm in store to decide whether a product may be right for you or not. Of course, there are going to be swatches, especially on Instagram, that are completely useless. My friend Leisha over at Xsparkage did a fantastic video on that. At the, you know, the packed swatches that are on stencils, that like they use a stencil to do it. Those, all they show you is what the color looks like on skin, but it does not give you clues to performance. So we're not gonna be talking about those today. We're gonna be talking about these swatches that are just swiped onto the skin like the way that I do it and many other people do it in YouTube videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna start with the Juvia's Place Masquerade Palette. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes. So I'm gonna explain to you how I swatch, why I swatch the way that I do. I'm just gonna swatch two uh, shimmer shades and then two matte shades. So what I do is I just kind of rub my finger in a circle and then I swooch it on my arm. Okay, so let's close that up. I do not use a primer on my arm and that's kind of a controversial decision to not use a primer. The reason why I don't use a primer is I feel like eyeshadows should perform without a primer. And even though a lot of people that watch makeup videos probably me and you, we do use primers on our eyes. Not everybody does. And because of that, I feel like it's better information to not use a primer. Also, different primers have different formulas. So depending on what primer you use, you may get different swatches. So I feel like a clean arm, which is what I always do, always make sure my arm is nice and clean, is the best way to do swatches. That's just my personal opinion. It's okay to disagree with me. If you do, that's fine. So let me tell you what I see when I see these swatches. With the foiled shades, I see a clean swipe 
of product. This is going to show me how these are going to apply to my eyes with a fingertip. So it's got a nice clean line of product. You don't see any streaking. It just goes straight down. So these are going to pack onto the eyes absolutely beautifully. Now with the matte shades, we don't usually, at least I don't usually apply mattes with my fingertips. Not to say you can't, but I don't usually. But there are still clues in a matte swatch that you can take with you. So if you notice, there's a, where I put my finger down initially, there's going to be more product, of course, because my finger had all the product when I pressed it down. Down here and then this is the way it's kind of smearing on my arm you'll notice with the red that there's more of a fingerprint this is going to be a little more difficult to use than this one here this one's going to blend a little bit better this one you can see that it gets really dark here it's light but it's got a nice even trail so this is one that's probably going to be really nice with the blending brush because you see that nice even trail I'm going to show you some in a bit that don't have an even trail that are going to be even going to be more difficult to work with so now moving on to the brush swatches. I like to use this Omnia brush. This has been my favorite brush to swatch with recently. I personally just pick a brush that I use to pack color onto the lid when I do my swatches. That's what seems to work well for me. Okay, so when I when I pick my brush, I always make sure before I do my swatches that I look at the brush to make sure product is picking up on the brush so that it's fair. And yes, there is product picking up on the brush, so I know I'm good. I put this tape here so that I know where to lay my arm. So it's always in the same place every time. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and swatch this with the brush and you'll see the first swipe it's pretty even. I definitely have more product at the top where I first laid it down but it's a pretty even swipe and as I keep going you'll still see it's a nice even swatch of color. This one is going to be an, a nice easy shadow to work with. In between, I usually use a washcloth and it's my color switch. <laughs> and that gets the product off of the brush. Moving on to that green shade, bam. See, there's is a little bit patchy, but look how beautiful that is when I run it over with a brush, just absolutely beautiful. So these are going to apply pretty nicely with a brush as well. They're just not going to be intense, as intense as with a fingertip, but they're still definitely able to be used with a brush. Moving on to the mat, you can see that there is shadow on the brush, which is good. And I'm just going to bring it down. And you can see, of course, the shadow is mostly here, but we do have a nice, even stroke of product there. Nice and even. Now, what happens if I keep going? If I keep going like this, if it's a lower quality shadow, you're not, it's going to just completely fade away. Of course, there is going to be some fading the more you rub it, but a low quality shadow is just going to be gone. It's, it's not even going to stick around for something like that. This is a better shadow, so it is going to stick around. Now watch what happens when I brush swatch this shade. Do you see how it's kind of patchy? You see how it's not even? It was the same in the finger swatch. It's a little bit more difficult to work with. So this one's probably gonna need a little bit more love on the eye, but if you work with it enough, you can see that the shadow does blend and we end up with a nice even color all the way through. It's just gonna take a little bit more work than this brown shade here. Now let's go ahead and move on to subculture. I think this is a great example of difficult to work with shadows. If you were not around for subculture gate, basically what happened was that this got terrible reviews from the first people who reviewed it because this is a very different formula than the typical Anastasia Beverly Hills formula. There's a lot less ingredients in it and they're very, 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 very pigmented. You know what, let's go ahead and swatch this electric shade because this one's really weird and then let's swatch uh let's do destiny let's do all star and then let's do this guy over here so you can see you can almost see my skin through that finger swatch so this is going to be more of a topper rather than one that's packed on the lid at least from the one swatch but we're going to try to build that up and see if we can get it to build
So one thing I want you to take note of is the streak of product that's going down the middle. That shows me that these are insanely, insanely pigmented. That these are gonna go on, uh, on the eyes like mud and they're gonna be really difficult to blend, but, but they are blendable. You just have to work with them and we're gonna show you that in the brush swatch. So let's go ahead and try to build up the shade right here. Okay, so let's swatch into electric and you can see that it does build, but is it the same foiled consistency as the Juvia's Place? Absolutely not. It's going to give a completely different look. That's why this swatch is important to see. Now going in with the brush with electric, you'll see there is product on my brush, but it's like patchy and sparse. So I'm hoping this brush swatches Yep, you can see it's it's just not applying with the brush. So I'm gonna switch over, and instead we're gonna use this Makeup Geek foiled brush to see if that helps. You can see the product picking up a little bit better on that brush, but it's not really picking up so much on the skin. So what I would say if I saw this is this is gonna be a shade that's probably best packed on with a fingertip rather than with a brush, and you're not gonna get a huge amount of pigmentation from it. Okay, let's brush swatch Destiny. Okay, and you can see that it's got that dense pigmentation here, so when you put it on your eye, it's gonna give you a lot of pigment. You're gonna use a really light hand to pack this, to put this onto your lid, and then you get that streakiness. But watch what happens when I blend it down. See how it's just blending away there? So this is gonna be one you're gonna to need to put on very gently, build a little bit, put on a little more, build a little bit, because you can get that intense pigmentation, but it's just gonna take a little bit more work if you wanna get a like, nice, even color. All right, lots and lots of product picking up on that brush. Bam. Okay, this one's a little more even. Do you see that? It's still patchy but it's a little more even than the last one, but still definitely patchy. Can we get it to be nice and even if we just keep blending it? If we keep going down, not really, super streaky, but if I use a blending brush, I might have better luck with that. You can also see down here all the product coming off onto my table, so this is definitely one that's gonna give you probably more fallout. But then again, I also didn't tap off my brush before I did the swatch. And then finally, let's test this last guy right here. Just super patchy down the arm. Lots of product coming off. So you could see the difference between this and the Juvia's Place palette that I showed you. The swatches just aren't even, they're more difficult. Does that mean this is the worst palette ever? No, but some people are not going to be able to get this palette to work for them, including somebody like me. There's definitely makeup artists out there that you could put poop on a plate and tip your brush into it and put on your eye and make it look amazing. I don't recommend that though, pink eye, but 
You know what I'm saying? There are some people that can make anything work, but for me, when I see swatches like this, this would be something that I wouldn't invest my money in. But that being said, do I like my subculture palette? Kind of, sometimes, a little bit. I just find it really difficult to work with and I think that shows in the swatches. My table is a mess, oh my gosh. Another reason why swatches I feel like are very helpful is because sometimes in the pan, shadows look very different than what they look like on the eye and in a swatch. So swatches give you an idea of what the shade will look like on the eye. So for example, this is a Pat McGrath Mothership palette and these shimmery shades look very different in the pan than they do on the eye. Look at this baby, oh my gosh. All right, let me swatch them on my arm. I just can't, I can't help it. All right, I have to do it. I have to do it, they're so pretty. Bam, oh my gosh. Look at this, look at that. You see that shine? Oh. And this one, you can really see the undertone in that one. And this, I feel like, is representative of what happens on the eye, where the pan, I feel like, isn't exactly what you see when you actually use the shadow. So I find the finger swatches to be very useful in that way. And to conclude this analysis, I wanted to show you a palette that does not perform well on the eyes or in swatches. It's just not good. <laughs> NYX has some great eyeshadow formulas. This one is not one of them. This is the Dream Catcher palette. So let's go ahead and swatch. Make sure I can get my finger in there. And you can just see it even on the fingertips. It's like meh. See how it's kind of chunky? That one you can't see at all. Pinky's not wanting to cooperate. There you go. Yeah, not good. <laughs> not good at all. Uh, and you can see like how chunky that is. So if I were filming a video, I would blow that off so you can <laughs> you can see it. Uh, but yeah, not, not so good at all. Uh, let's go ahead and see if they can build though because that's important. Okay. Ah, see that's building pretty nicely. Some of them at least. Ugh. Get my angle there. <sighs> there we go. Okay, so you can see this one builds pretty nicely. So that one's gonna be a nice one to work with. This one might be okay, but these are complete duds. Let's go ahead and do some brush swatches and see how that works. Okay, lots of product on the brush. And womp, womp, womp. Let's try again. A little bit better. Let's try the Makeup Geek brush. This one's it's the one that's specifically meant for foiled shadows. Mm, maybe a little bit. Light wash of color, if that's your, your deal. That's not my deal, but maybe you like that. Some people like, you know, we all have different likes and different things we enjoy. Okay, so it's Definitely on the brush there, just it, it's not really that different of a color than the brush. See how it doesn't even, like with the subculture palette, you could see it being really thick where I set the brush down with this, just not so much, not so much. Okay, hopefully this one performs a little, no. Nope. Wah, wah, wah. Second one. Hmm. Builds a little bit. This one's a little bit better. You can also see all the fallout that's going on on the table over there. It's not, not good. But again, if I tapped off my brush, I probably wouldn't get nearly as much. But you can see how it's not even providing an even color. I hope you found this video super helpful. If you disagree with me about this, 
it's totally okay. Please remember, we're discussing inanimate objects here. It does not have to be life or death. Get the pitchforks. It doesn't have to be. We can disagree and it's okay. But I did want to provide this for you so that maybe it could help you save some money or be able to get more out of YouTube videos or pictures that you see. So again, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did and you want to stick around, you want to see more of my content and you're not already subscribed, please click the subscribe button down below and join our community in the collective brain. And speaking of the collective brain, definitely feel free to chime in down below. Please be respectful. Again, inanimate objects. We do not have to go to war over inanimate objects. Enjoy the conversation down below. Mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.